And that's something to, to remember. This year, we will be awarding the Diggers Award via Jimmy McGovern to Ken Loach. And um, I'm really grateful. It's it's a great occasion, and to see so many people and so many good radicals and socialists all in one place. Um, and uh, I, I know I'm here to celebrate the life of uh, one of the sons of Wigan, who raised people's spirits at a time of conflict. George Formby, <laughs> and uh, he kept me uh, kept me entertained in my youth. In fact, I had a ukulele at one time and uh, drove the neighbours mad uh, with my little stick of Blackpool Rock. And um, so, of course, it is another son of Wigan we have to celebrate today. Much more subversive than George Formby, he'll only be known to some of the older comrades here. The irrepressible Frank Randall. <laughs> and I, uh, when we went to Blackpool once a year, um, I used to see Frank on the uh, on the North Pier, and I've never seen an audience so reduced to helpless tears as that great man managed. Um, and I believe there was on one occasion when he, uh, when the uh, the local council objected to him. He bombed the town hall with toilet rolls. <laughs> and I just wondered if anyone was free when the tour is in Birmingham, because it's not a bad idea. <laughs> anyway, Gerard Wynn Stanley, what a great man, great man. And Wigan should be very proud of him. He was um, made his mark, of course, at a very critical time in our history, when there was a revolution. And when Stanley thought that the, when they talked of the liberty for the people, they meant all the people. But of course he was wrong because Cromwell and Fairfax and the leaders of the parliamentary group said, no, 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 it's not for you, it's for us. It was for the men of property, it was for the... Uh, the, uh, the merchants, uh, what we would call the entrepreneurs, it was the men of power. And now, 400, three, 300 years later, 400 years later, we have to think, where has that revolution brought us that established the power of that class? And we know where it's brought us. It's brought us to poverty, to food banks, to job insecurity, to the destruction of the environment, to homelessness, it's brought us to absolute disaster. And the words of Gerard Wynne Stanley should ring in our ears, because he spoke, uh, in fact I, I jotted some of them down actually, if I can find the relevant bit of paper. Um, talk amongst yourselves while I find it in my pockets. Um, yes. He said, wheresoever there is a people united of livelihood, livelihood into oneness, it will become the strongest land in the world. For then they will be as one man to defend their inheritance. And then he spoke of the, the rich who control us now. And he said, whereas on the other side, pleading for property and single interest divides the people and is the cause of all wars and bloodshed and contention everywhere. How true those words are today, how true they are. Now, if we'd been meeting a couple of years ago, we would have talked about the, um, the problems that we face, and we'd have uh, shaken our heads and said, where is the hope coming from? And yet one year ago, I think there was the most significant event in Labour politics since the Labour Party was formed. In that, in that we have a Labour leader 
the first one in history who stands alongside people in struggle, stands with them in pick, on a picket line as Labour leader. And people are afraid of him. People are afraid of him and what he brings. And what he brings what he brings is an attack on capital. And I think we can see it if there is, as he says, a national investment bank that puts public money into industries. We have to ensure that not only do we have public money in, we have public control and public ownership. And when he when he talks of removing the private contractors from the health service and having everyone directly employed, and when he talks about building council houses with public funds through local authorities, again with everyone directly employed, builders, architects, planners, sustainable buildings, when he speaks of these things, we need the strength, he needs the strength of a united movement that will carry that out on the ground. Because it's no use having half a dozen in Parliament surrounded by hostile forces. We need a real strength on the ground, as shown by you today here. Because in terms of dirty tricks, we ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> and the dirty tricks of the people that have lost Labour elections over and over again, have lost Scotland, have been in illegal wars, have allowed the privatisation of the health service, have presided over a homeless crisis that we thought we'd never see again, those are the people that are stabbing him in the back. Yeah. And we really cannot tolerate that. They have to go. Yeah. Think, just think, if Corbyn's group had disqualified a quarter to a third of the membership, that would have been the story from day one, every day until the election, as it because it was the other side, it's not mentioned. It's not mentioned. And this nonsense of making the shadow cabinet elected by the MPs, well, they spent all their time getting out of the shadow cabinet. What do they want to get back in for? <laughs> Nonsense. It made sense when the MPs represented the members. The members are not represented by those MPs, so it has no significance. But I want to say one other thing before we get to the pies. <laughs> Just one other thing. The Labour movement is a broad movement. We know it here, and we know it in all the stalls and all the people who have contributed to today. The Labour movement is, yes, the Labour Party. It's also the trade unions. It's also the campaigns. It's also the community organisations. And it's also the left parties that found that they couldn't stomach Labour under Blair and many people left because they wanted to have real discussion about how to change our society for the better. It's all, all embodied ideas, great socialist ideas from great thinkers from the 19th century onwards who could, had no found no home in the Labour Party, but an essential part of the Labour movement. The great campaign, the Stop the War campaign, for example, the greatest <laughs> Uh, campaign in peacetime in, in our history was remarkable because it on the one hand it had Jeremy Corbyn very prominent, very active but it was also built by people outside the Labour Party against the war now the reality is seems to me that with Jeremy Corbyn and John MacDonald and his friends we have to be one movement again and we have to be one, have one party that really represents the working class interests. And we don't, 
We don't, we don't let them divide us. When they talk about trot, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what the word means. And we have to stand together and say, we are one movement. And as they said 100 years ago, we need representation. And we need not only representation in Parliament, we need democracy throughout industry, we need democracy on our public services, and we need democracy in the media. We need democracy in the media. Because the freedom of the press is not the freedom of rich men to tell us to air their prejudices and their class bias. And the freedom of broadcasting is not the BBC acting as an arm of government. We need democracy in broadcasting, democracy, democracy in the press, democracy throughout our society. If we stick together, we can win, and oh my God, it's going to be a victory. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ken Loach, Mr. Jimmy McGovern, let's hear it! Power to the people, get in there! Well, fantastic, thank you for coming down.